William Afton, the true antagonist of the FNAF franchise, a character that has been consistently brought back to life. The purple guy, also known as William Afton, is one of the most important characters in the whole franchise. Yet, still, the character is being looked down upon as being a joke. When did this transition start, and why is the most important character in FNAF broken? The story of William Afton is one of pain and grief. He is a complicated man who is hooked to his work of farming remnant. This in the FNAF universe is essentially soul matter, which makes no sense, but we're gonna go with it. William uses his robots as tools to take this remnant and the most efficient way in doing so is targeting kids. So, William would make a bunch of high-tech animatronics, which have one noticeable difference. They are designed to capture. With this, William launches Circus Baby Entertainment Rental and before this, Circus Baby Pizza World. During his last business, his daughter, Elizabeth Afton, would be scooped by his own creation and his son crushed by the jaws of Fredbear. This drove William mad and with his business partner, Henry, currently witnessing immense success, he became cynical. His newly found obsession was what took many lives in the old Freddy Fazbear pizzeria and with this he continued his work. Eventually this would all come back to William as the very souls he took trapped him in a room. William with no escape found the only thing that could scare these spirits away, the broken spring bonnie suit, the exact suit that took their lives. William puts the suit on which due to the condensation in the room caused a spring lock failure, which ended the life of William. Or so we thought, as due to the remnant attached onto the suit, William would remain alive and fueled by vengeance. William would return 30 years later. So this is the rough outline of the story of William Afton. I haven't gone into full detail, but I hope this paints a picture on the backstory of William Afton for newcomers to the franchise. Now, first of all, this story, as you can imagine, is quite convoluted and filled with a bunch of crazy ideas. This is FNAF after all, and crazy is essentially what drives the continued intrigue for the franchise. Is this a tangible story? Well, so far, it is. But it's what happens next that completely blows this out of the water. After the fire in FNAF 3, William becomes Scrap Trap and is lured to the FNAF 6 building where, after Henry reveals the truth of the building being a trap, he is burnt again. This fire finally kills William and finally concludes the Afton saga and given this is hard to imagine a way for him to come back. Well, he does come back and this unveiling of William nearly broke the FNAF franchise. So, how did William come back? Well, first of all, now William is stuck in Eternal Purgatory, where after his suit was found post FNAF 6, Scrap Trap is brought into a facility where the suit is scrapped. Somehow, a chip containing a sample of William's soul is collected and recorded into a game, which gives birth to Glitch Trap. Health Wanted is overall a confusing game, as it includes ideas of digital entities and seeing a digitized version of William Afton really blew people away. This was ludicrous and perhaps a far step in the wrong direction for the story going forward. If characters can keep coming back, then it makes the deaths of the characters worthless and this is the same issue Marvel are facing right now. Bit off topic, I know, but it all connects to each other. If characters continue to be reincarnated and revived, it completely undermines their stories. This is exactly what happened to William Afton, and this is further evident in the next game in the franchise, Security Breach. So, Burn Trap. I have spoken about Burn Trap multiple times on this channel, and it is important to first dissect the story of William Afton becoming Burn Trap. Burn Trap is a vessel for William to use for his revival. It is an amalgamation of scrap, scrapped from FNAF 6, and it's what William uses to be brought back to life. This is clearly trying to bring back the character who has long been dead, 
and it really creates more problems than solutions. Its concept should be seen as good, but the execution was done poorly. And not only that, a character like William should have not been the primary focus of Security Breach. Instead, Vanny, a new character, should have been the main focus of Security Breach, as she is an evolution of William's character. Help Wanted had already given context to Vanny's character, and the build-up of her becoming a villain was already there. A follower of William, who is trying to recapture the image of William during the 80s. Instead, Vanny is simply mind-controlled by William, and is forced to do his bidding, which makes for a stale story. This franchise has already shown it can step into crazy concepts, However, this was simply one step too far. Fans wanted a retcon and to add fire to the flame, no one at this time knew what was deemed canon or not. So at this point, the core story of FNAF has been completely shattered and changed. And it all leads back to William Afton, by far the most important character behind this franchise. Why is this overuse of nostalgia, which seems to plague not just FNAF, but multiple franchises exist? If the recent success of Fortnite OG isn't a clear indicator that this technique is viable, but does it last? How long can you continue to reuse characters until the very identity of the character is forever changed, potentially damaging the reputation of the franchise and ruining the character for good? William Afton was known for always coming back. I mean, he says it a lot of times, but just how many times can he truly come back until no one cares anymore? Is this trope's magic starting to wear off? It's clear William Afton is not only the most well-known FNAF character beside Freddy Fazbear, but is now one of the most known movie antagonists in the newest FNAF film. Matthew Lillard plays the new William Afton, who is the antagonist of the film. It is clear it takes inspiration from both the games and the books, which I haven't touched on much as my overall knowledge of the books compared to the games is pretty drastic. Yeah, I haven't read the books, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. But what I do know is that William in the books is clearly a change to the original character the games portrayed. Although there are similarities, each version of William is different, and in the movie, William is a cold-blooded murderer, who is also shown to be a pretty talented engineer and a genius. This is a lot like the games, however, key moments like the Springlock scene, it's very obvious changes were made. The way I see it is the movie version of William is a mix of the games and the books, which creates a more coherent character to the story Scott is trying to tell through the movies. And I think Matthew Lillard does an awesome job in showing this through his performance as William Afton. The main issue I have so far with this version of William is firstly, the obvious lack of screen time William has in this movie. And this is probably for story reasons, but still more William Afton screen time is needed to flesh out the character even more. This, in my opinion, is a much better take of the character than what the games had. It's clear that after the death of the character, the games continued to recapture that original essence of William, but in doing so, created more problems. This is my biggest fear with the movie. Now, there are three movies which are speculated to release. The one we just got, and two more sequels after this. But this is where an issue arises, and one that could see the complete destruction of the character. The FNAF movie was a massive success. This is a good thing, right? Well yes, of course, it's great. This means more movies may get greenlit by Blumhouse, and that means we may see more FNAF movies. The issue is, will William just become another Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees? Don't get me wrong, these characters are iconic, but they simply have too many movies and this may be what happens to William Afton. 
I think Blumhouse will do what's right for the character, but then again, there will always be uncertainty with the character's future. However, I have faith in this version of William because Scott has shown that he has a lot of control over the movies. So, if Blumhouse agrees to make more movies, Scott will have control over the direction the movies take, which will hopefully keep William as a grounded character. After the failure of Burn Trap and to some degree Glitch Trap, I feel the portrayal of William will be more focused on telling a complete story instead of randomly having the character appear in every FNAF project moving forward. This excites me as now with the movies, it's a chance to tell the story of William Afton again and to do the character justice after the clear disappointment of Burn Trap. So at this point in time, the story of William Afton is still up in the air and only time will tell how the characters will evolve during the course of the movies. So that's about it for this video. If you have enjoyed, smash a like, and if you are new around here, please consider subscribing. Also, thank you so much for the recent support. We just hit 10,000 subs on the channel. I really appreciate the support you all have been giving me. Thank you everyone who have watched my videos. Um, I really, really just wanted to just entertain people, I guess, and um, to see it paying off is really something, and I just really can't thank everyone enough for this. Thank you. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Until next time, goodbye.